house upon a hill, how and why? Show you I am real. A lonely day introduced myself again. I'm no love. You used to think could not exist. I'm as sure as where you stay. This is my ideal. Ideal. I Catching fire as you break through. Oh, you're not far away, but coming close. And oh, even as I wait, but coming close. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Freedom Church. Are you guys ready to exalt the King of Kings tonight? <laughs> Amen.
Well, we are so excited that you guys are with us tonight. Welcome. And can we just take a moment and welcome all of our first time guests. Let's give them a big round of applause. We have something so, so special for you guys tonight. Barry Bennett is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're so blessed and excited, aren't we? Well, at this portion, if you don't mind taking a seat with us for just a moment, here at Freedom Church, we believe that giving is just as much a part of worship as what we just did. And so we take this portion right here of our service to do our announcements, to have our offering. That way, when we're done with the, all of this, we can go right into the teaching. It's just powerful, and we love to just put it all together. So actually, um, one more time, any first-time guests with us, can we just give them a big hand? So at this portion, if you are a very first time guest, of course you are not obligated to give in this offering tonight. However, we want to give a gift to you just to thank you for joining us tonight. So there's a blue connection card on your seat or maybe the seat around you. And if you wouldn't mind to take a moment and fill that out legibly for us because we want to send you a really awesome gift in the mail that you can use right here in our community. Again, just to say thank you and how much we appreciate you. So fill that out and then put that in the offering bucket as it comes by tonight. And for those of you that will be giving in tonight's offering, the ways to give are up on the screen. You're able to text to give, give online, or with an offering envelope. And if anyone needs an offering envelope, our ushers have them. If they're not on the seats around you, if you can just raise your hand and they will bring you one of those envelopes as well. And want to remind you about our Building for Freedom Fund. God is just doing amazing things here at Freedom. And if you are one of those that have just been investing in the future of Freedom Church and our new property and facility, amen, Woo! then make sure and designate that on your envelope or on your online giving. You can, all, you can choose Building for Freedom. All right, so a couple announcements while you guys are filling all that out, your connection cards and your uh, envelopes. So we have started our Christmas outreach. And a lot of you have been asking, this is funny, because it is a turkey dinner, we've had some people say, now wait, is this for Thanksgiving? Or it's actually for Christmas. So even though the church is providing the turkeys, we're asking you guys to participate and just um, fill, uh, bring all the items that are on that list. We will have greeters and ushers at the back of the doors tonight as you're leaving, and you can grab a form that shows yeah, let me, let me show everybody that, thank you. It looks like this, and it's just got all the fixings, can I say that? <laughs> all the fixings for a whole Christmas dinner. And again, the church is gonna provide all the turkeys and the pies, and we are gonna feed, our goal is to feed 50 families right here in the community. Isn't that amazing? Any families, we've got some connections at the local schools and stuff, and know of families that could really be blessed and use some food during the holidays. So um, I also want to say this, if you are actually a uh, member here of the church and, or any, even here tonight and you're listening to this announcement and you're thinking, man, I could really use a meal for my family, family at Christmas, we have also a sign up at the, in the foyer before you leave today um, at the Guest Central. Let them know that you'd like to sign up for a Christmas dinner and we would love to uh, have a dinner for you guys as well. Um, let me see. Oh, our next announcement. So our Christmas service this year is December 21st, so we have a little bit of time. But our kids are planning something really fun, and so they're going to start working on a fun little Christmas song and dance and all that. So I wanted to let the parents know that if you can, get your children here from here on until December 21st to learn that song and all their fun little moves, and that way they're all prepared. Of course, we always love the one little kid that has absolutely no idea what they're doing up here on stage, right? So we'll have that for sure, but it'd be great if your kids could participate in that. So bring them out on Saturday nights as they get ready for our Christmas service. And, oh, I have one more fun thing that I want to tell you. So see this little doodad on the back of my phone? So we've had, uh, Joe and I have had ours. It was a gift that somebody had uh, ordered and got these with our church logo, these little, they're called pop sockets. And we've had a slew of people say, hey, we really want some of those. Do you guys sell those? And we've had people asking us, so, we ordered a big bunch of these, and these are for sale for $5 out in the foyer at Yes Central as well. So if you guys want your own Freedom Church Pop Socket, you're able to get those. Isn't that fun? <laughs> All right, we love you guys so much, and we're so excited for this whole service, what God has planned for us, 
what God's going to speak to us and everything that we get to do just to bless him. Isn't he worthy? He is worthy. All right, let me go ahead and pray over tonight's offering. Father, we love you. We love you. We honor you. We are so excited to come together as a church family and just celebrate Jesus. Celebrate every promise, just like the song that we sang. You are the God of the promise. And our hope and all of our trust is in you to meet our needs, to supply, to go above and beyond what we could ask, think, or imagine because of your power that is at work in us. So, Father, we take every single penny sown and we thank you, Father, that you breathe life and you multiply it. Father, you expand your kingdom. And you meet the needs of your children because you are a faithful father. And we trust and believe in you tonight. In Jesus' name, can we all say amen. Well, you're welcome to stand back up with us after the bucket goes by you. And let's just continue to honor Jesus in this place. Amen.
Jesus, and I don't have to prove a thing. Already approved of me, yes, Jesus. And this is where. Jesus, you are here. Your power is present to heal, to speak, to bring freedom. You make a goodness. <laughs> oh, Jesus, you're the healer. Oh, Jesus, you're the healer. Your love is a revival fire that sets me free. Oh, Jesus, you're the healer. Like 
sun against the snow. <laughs> yeah. You gather all my pieces, you make them whole, Jesus. You fix our broken hearts to said, uh, there's a revival fire that sets me free. Jesus, you're the healer. I closed my eyes and I saw like holy fire dropping down on us. And it was showing like, I saw myself as like something, uh, like covered in something, something dark and black. And the fire, I was like, no, I don't, I don't want that. But then all of a sudden, when it started burning away, all that old stuff, it showed me what was under and it was full of gold. And it showed me that was all of us under that fire, he gets rid of all that crap that's on the outside and brings out what's already on the inside of us. He's the healer. He heals our minds, our everything. Healer. Come on, sing it one more time. <laughs> oh, Jesus, show my healing.
we receive right now your healing power in this place you're restoring you're redeeming because that's who you are you are the great I am you Jesus to your side cause heaven is real and death is a lie I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one hallelujah holy holy God almighty great be near, near 
ready? The mountains shake before him, the demons run and flee. At the mention of the name, King of Majesty.
just sing your own song. Oh, just give him praises. Oh, just lift up your voice to your Father. Oh, 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 holy, holy God. Holy, holy He said in his presence, there's fullness of joy, of whatever it is you need, peace, fullness of peace, fullness of wisdom, fullness of healing, provision, his right hand are pleasures forevermore, right here, right now. So just in this attitude of honor and worship, you can go ahead and have your seats. And we are, once again, so honored to have Barry Bennett here with us tonight. <laughs> so blessed. So if Barry can just make his way up here, we are ready to hear what God has to say through you. <laughs> Amen. Let's give him a big hand, everybody. Hi, church. Every time someone gets up on this platform to walk, it feels like an earthquake. I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't prepared for that. It reminded me of Chile. So. Anyway, I know I can uh, tell you're out there. Praise God. Good to see you all. Good to be here. I really appreciate the invitation. Uh, I've known Joe at Tessa for many years. Wait, when did you graduate? Okay. You were at Elkton, though, weren't you? Yes. You, okay, so it's been a while, yeah. So, and probably I know a lot of you all out there as well. Amen? A lot of, a lot of Karis folks here. So, it's good to be here with you, good to uh, get to share the word, and really uh, always appreciate opportunities to share the word outside of the context of Bible college. 
I get to do different things when I, when I travel, so that's always fun. And uh, I think what I want to share tonight, uh, as many of you know, I, I have a, um, a ministry on Facebook and uh, daily post teachings that come out every day, and, and I get a lot of response from that, and I get a lot of letters and emails and messages and, and things of that nature. And as you, as you answer people's questions, as you hear their stories, as you receive messages about what they're going through, uh, you really, I'm doing this for years and years and years now, but uh, you begin to learn the human condition and what people need and what they're crying out for. And it, it really begins to be that which is the most important thing in my heart. And I'm always asking the Lord for a key. What is the key? I want the key to help people. I don't think there's just one key, but uh, for a lot of people, there's one key in, in certain situations. And so I'm always looking for some way to help them have a breakthrough. How many of you have ever had a breakthrough? Okay, and I've had many breakthroughs in my life, and I keep having breakthroughs uh, of, of a new revelation, a new understanding, a new inspiration. The light comes on in some area. And so my heart tonight is to uh, help perhaps some of you have a breakthrough. Amen? And I'm going to talk about, and it's, uh, I don't know, maybe you think, well, I've heard this before, I don't, but you're going to hear it again if you have. Uh, but I'm going to talk about that which you carry in your heart and how that determines your future. The vision you have in your heart, and how that determines your future. So I'm going to start in kind of an unusual place, but this jumped out at me recently, and I just thought it was interesting. Uh, if you want to go with me to 2 Kings chapter 7, I'm not going to take the time to, to build this whole story, but Israel is under siege. They're, they're in a city surrounded by uh, Ben-Hadad from Assyria. They're being assaulted. They, they, it's a hopeless situation. And there's a tremendous famine in the city. It's uh, so tremendous. If you go back to chapter 6, uh, you can read about how bad it really was. I won't go into that. But the famine was extremely bad. Uh, and so the people were desperate. The king was desperate. He was blaming the situation on Elisha. Uh, Elisha was nearby. And so he, I won't get into all of that because really the, what I want to get at is, is just a simple, simple few words here. The king sends an emissary to Elisha to, to find out about this famine and about the enemy that's about to swallow them up. And so in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, it says that Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, a seah, I'll say seah, I'm not sure how to say that, a fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seahs of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Or that means nothing to us, but what that is saying is that in spite of this famine, tomorrow at this time, there's going to be an abundance, so much so that it will be cheap to buy everything that's out there. And so this is what the word of the Lord is saying uh, to the king's emissary. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And that's what jumped out at me. We're going to read the rest in just a second. I thought, immediately, when a promise of God, the word of God was given to, to this man and to the king through this man, the immediate reaction was unbelief. The immediate reaction was unbelief. How can this be? And then the response is, uh, if, he says, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, how could this thing be? And he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes but you shall not eat of it. And that's the part that really grabbed me. Because when I deal with people and they're writing me all of the time, and many times they're very receptive and very thankful for the counsel I give or the prayers I pray or whatever. But there are some who when I respond with the word of the Lord, they respond like this guy. How could this be? And then they want to make sure I fully understood how serious their problem is. And so they'll write me back and say, I don't think you get it. <laughs> that the doctor said this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And you realize that what people carry in their hearts, the first response 
that comes out of the heart reveals what's in the heart. And what's in the heart reveals what is the future. And so when we hear a promise from God and our immediate response is, if the Lord opened windows from heaven, how could this be? When we, when we respond on that level, we're revealing our hearts and we may see other people getting healed, delivered, and prospered, but we won't get to partake of it. Hmm. <laughs> got really quiet. It's not that there's not grace for you to move into that new dimension, but, but helping us understand why some of us may not be experiencing that dimension because the first thing in our heart is, I don't believe the word of God. And if I was going to take this down to the, the key that I'm looking for, I think the key that I'm looking for is that we don't believe the word of God many times. We may mentally assent to it. We may agree that, yeah, in general, yeah, I know God is good. And, but when we hear a promise that's specifically for our situation, and we read that promise, we begin to regurgitate what the doctor said, or what happened to my grandmother when she had this, or what happened to this people when they went through this and this. And we begin to, with logic and memory, kill the word of God. The, the serpent said to Adam and Eve, half God said, he knew the key. If I can get them off the word, I've won. And see, when we decide, when, when out of our heart comes unbelief, he's got, we're off the word. How could this be? I don't think you understand. It's really serious. It's stage four. You know, how, it, and once you've chosen to be off the word of God, you now have entered into the place of unbelief in which you may see other people getting healed, and I get those letters too. Why is everybody getting healed but me? But then they'll go on and tell me how bad it is. And they're not believing the promise of God. This is, okay, so we're going to dig into this a little bit, if you will, with me. All right? So, I've got, uh, what do I have here? I'm a teacher, so I've got five points. Is that all right? <laughs> Seems to work. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do point number one. A promise must be seen with the heart to be experienced. A promise must be seen with the heart to be experienced. You can understand it with your head, but if you don't see it with your heart, chances are you're not going to experience it. You, many people are seeing other people get healed, seeing other people get delivered, seeing other people, but they're not seeing themselves get healed. They're not seeing themselves get delivered. They're not seeing themselves prosper. They're not seeing their marriage healed. They're not seeing their children doing well. They're seeing other people, and they know it's in the Bible, but they don't have, they don't, they're not carrying that in their heart. And because it's not in their heart, because it's not the vision of their heart, they're not expecting it. They're not expecting it. My, this is being live-streamed, isn't it? Yes. I was going to... Yep. I hope my f grandkids aren't watching. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, they don't know. They've been told they may be getting a dog for Christmas. But they... <laughs> what did I miss? Anyway. The, but actually, they are getting a dog for Christmas. But, they're, but they are uh, saving their money to be involved in this process. But they don't know the dog's already been picked out. The dog's already got a deposit on it. The dog's, the dog's a done deal. Okay. But, well, you, you say praise God. I'm not so sure. <laughs> anyway. But what's going on in their little hearts? There is so much expectancy. There is so much excitement. There is so much... They're not seeing the kind of dog. They're not seeing the color of the dog. They're not seeing anything about the dog specifically, but they're seeing a dog. Yeah. See, they have an expectancy because their parents have, have put a promise in their hearts, and they're involved in participating with the promise, but the promise is already a done deal. But they are seeing something. It's not a specific, but it's a, it's a general anticipation, expectation of a dog, and, and they believe it with all their little hearts. See? See, except we come to him as children. But when you read a promise, what do you get out of it? 
Well, I know that worked for Joe, but that just never works for me. That's unbelief in our hearts. We're not carrying a vision of a promise fulfilled, a promise completed. I won't read the woman uh, with the issue of blood, but you, most of you are familiar with that story. The woman with the issue of blood saw something before she said something. Or in other words, her saying was a result of her seeing. She's not going to say something she hasn't seen. If I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And then she didn't stop and say, where did that come from? No, that came from what she was seeing on the inside. If I can just get through the crowd and touch the hem of his garment, you won't experience promises that you haven't seen in your heart. You've got to see them in your heart. Your heart is going to be the, the factory, almost Spanished that one. Uh, <laughs> your heart has got to be the factory of your faith, of your vision, of your future. All right, second point, the heart creates. The heart creates the vision of the future. The heart creates the vision of the future. What was Jesus upset with in Israel? Go with me to Matthew 13, 15. Matthew 13, 15. It says, for the hearts of this people have grown dull. Wow. The hearts of this people have grown dull. He says, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Are your eyes and ears and your heart, are, are they blessed? Are you seeing what God wants? It's taken me decades to finally get to a place where I think I am now, and I'm, I'm, no doubt there's more, obviously there's more. But I don't know how many of you have gone through this, but it took me a long time to believe that God was really for me. Unknowingly, I never was in a legalistic setting in terms of church, but I was in a performance setting in terms of my own heart. Have I done enough to earn the blessings of God? And I was involved in that kind of, as a missionary, so probably, I, I don't even want to go back and think about it, how much we missed out on. And we had great fruit. It was a tremendous 12 years of our lives, but, but we were very poor most of that time because that's the vision I carried in my heart of, well, I'm a missionary. I'm expecting to be poor. Missionaries are poor. See, I was carrying that vision in my heart. And those, kinds of, those are the things where you, you don't even know it sometimes, that your heart is hardened to how good God is, and that God is for you, and that God has more for you. My favorite verse, obviously, is Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or think. And see, I hear that, and in the old days, I would say, if God would open the windows of heaven, could this thing be? I didn't say it out loud. But if I go back and check my heart way back then, that's what was in there. Some of you are relating to this. That exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or think, how do you quantify that? How do you, what do you do with that? And see, what usually we end up doing with that is watching other people experience it. Right? Jesse Duplantis was here a week or two ago. And people have different opinions, but I like Jesse Duplantis. Okay. Because I had a breakthrough sitting in the barn a few years ago when he was here. And I all of a sudden saw something I'd never seen. I saw that God was more for me than I was for me. I saw that God is not nervous about blessing me. That God doesn't get nervous if I have exceedingly, abundantly, more than I could ask or think. What the problem is isn't God's heart. The problem is my heart. We just finished doing some uh, remodeling in our home, which is like pulling teeth for me. I, my wife has a lot of vision. Her heart is filled with this. And uh, mine, not so much. But so we got carpet and flooring and all of this, that, and the other, and I'm whew, glad that's over. Last Saturday was hell. Was, <laughs> try to carpet most of your house in one day with 
moving stuff from room to room. I mean, I just, I was dreading that day for months, and it came, and I dreaded it the whole day. I hated it. <laughs> and when it was over, I was so happy. That it, everything, and so I'm the next day, or the next couple of days, this past week, I've been enjoying all of this. And she says, honey, we, j- we, we can't stop there. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to do the laundry room floor. We have some tile left over from the bathroom, and we've got to get the laundry room floor done. I thought, you've got to be kidding me. Huh? <laughs> Who cares about the laundry room floor? But see, I, but see she, her heart is bigger than mine. And so because her heart is bigger than mine, my heart has to grow. And so I've, I've caught up, so we're going to do the laundry room floor. Hallelujah. But see, I didn't have a vision for that. She had a vision for that. I would never have touched anything. I don't care. I have four walls and a roof. I'm happy, you know. But that's not, you know. So, who said amen? (laughs) But it's the vision that you carry. So I'm making this kind of silly right now, but the vision we carry in our hearts, let's, let's change it to something more serious. Can you see yourself healed? Well, I can see myself maybe getting a little better. Uh, what about exceedingly abundantly healed? Yes. Come on. See, are you carrying that in your heart? Yes. Let me go back to Matthew 13. He says, for the hearts of this people have grown dull. How, how alive is your heart to the promises of God? Does exceedingly abundantly, and I know that's not in my list of scriptures uh, for the screen, but does that resonate in your heart? Can you believe that God is that good? that he wants to smash you down with blessings. Do you believe God is that good? And most of us have to, I think we need to be honest and say, no, I haven't really carried that in my heart yet. I'm just trying to get by. It'd be great if just the pain in my back would leave or my knees would work. You know, that'd be awesome. Now, what about exceedingly abundantly? See, and the reason we're not seeing that with our eyes is because we're not seeing that with our hearts. Their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Or whatever blessing. The blessing falls on the heels of what's in your heart. And so point number two, the heart creates the vision of the future. 2 Corinthians 4.18 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we do not look at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. Anybody got a temporary bank account? (laughs) Okay. Thank God it's not eternal. Amen? Amen. (laughs) Or you eternally have 50 bucks in there. (laughs) But if that's your vision, that will be what you have. If that's what you've grown accustomed to, adapted your lifestyle to, and that's how you function in terms of your giving and your, your, your budgeting, your, your working with a $50 sum in your heart, then that's your future. So you're not going to go beyond what you see in your heart. We can take it to prosperity. We can take it to healing. We can take it to your marriage. We can take it to your family. We can take it to your employment, wherever you work. What you carry in your heart is going to be what you're, you start seeing with your, with your eyes or not seeing with your eyes, depending on what you're believing. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are uh, not seen are eternal. I spend a lot of time looking at the unseen. You say, how do you do that? I, I take the promises of God, and I understand that God is more for me than many times I've been for me that he wants to do exceedingly abundantly more than I can ask or think. And it's taken me a long time to get to this place where I believe that God is better and has more abundance for me, for my family, for my future, than I've budgeted in my heart. See, I've kind of budgeted the blessings of God. Am I talking to anybody? Is it... I've kind of budgeted, well, you know, maybe God can increase me by 3 or 4%, maybe 4.5% this year. <laughs> right? Based upon, well, my employer might do this and this and maybe that. And I'm budgeting the blessings of God based upon my logic and the dullness of my heart. 
looking at things that are seen and calculating. Well, if it's here now, then it can maybe get to there then. What happened to God? What happened to God? What happened to the God of abundance? What happened? See, we, we think, well, that's for other people. That's for Jesse Duplantis. No, folks. Jesse Duplantis started with the same incorruptible seed of God's word that you got. There is no difference. Whether you like him or not or any of these other big guys, I, that's not the point. The point is they did something with their grace. What have you done with yours? That is the point that, that woke me up. I have the same grace of God in me. That incorruptible seed of God's word that carries the nature of God, the abundance of God, the healing of God, the prosperity of God, everything of God that, that, I, that, that exists was in the seed that I received that you received. Some people are just doing more with it. They have a bigger vision. And I thought, man, have I settled for, well, obviously I've settled for less for so many years because I was evaluating me based upon performance, based upon what my parents told me I could or couldn't do, based upon my grades, based upon this, based upon that, and you'll, you'll probably end up right about here because that's the way you, how you've performed. And so I accepted that. And that became the vision I carried on the inside of me. Is this making sense? Probably most of us have a vision that got sewn into us by our parents and our schools. Performance-based vision, not grace-based. And so when we're working with a performance-based vision, we're going to end up with a heart that only accommodates that level of life. And then when we see other people getting blessed... We don't understand it or we get offended and we begin to lose the blessing of God. Point number three. You will do what you see. I keep falling over. Is this thing moving? I keep losing my balance. I didn't drink before I came. So, so. I thought, you all are watching me lose my balance and I'm thinking that's not typical. So, okay. You will do what you see. You will do what you see. Now, I'm talking about seeing with your heart. You will do what you see. John 8, 38. John 8, 38. says, I speak what I have seen with my father, and he's talking to the Pharisees, and you do what you have seen with your father. Your actions will flow out of what you see. The way you respond to your spouse flows out of what you see for your marriage. The way you treat your children flows out of what you see for your kids. The way you deal with your employer and your employment flows out of what you have seen in that circumstance, whether you're happy or not happy, and you're bitter or you're offended. And so you're going to do what you see. Man, that's powerful. Is that Jesus says, I'm going to speak what I have seen with my Father. And then we know he went on to do miracles and heal and deliver and all of this. And he says, and you will do what you have seen with your Father. You will do what you have seen. See, our hearts may be limiting and our actions are telling the tale. Did that make... Did, okay. Our actions are telling the tale of what's in our hearts. And so the way I treat my spouse is revealing what I see in my heart about my marriage. At this point, we've been married 41 and a half, more than 41 and a half years. And so I could say, yeah, wow. I could say, <laughs> I, I could say, what else is there? I mean, we're done with that. I mean, you know. Those of you that are laughing, I know why you're laughing. But you could, you could get this nonchalant attitude. Well, you know, we've been, I mean, we're married. That's, that part is over. We're just sort of, you know. No, I have a vision. I have a vision still for my wife, for our marriage. I have a vision still for my kids. They're all grown and doing well. Well, two, two of the three are doing really well. Daniel, I'm not... Okay. 
But I still see myself as their parent in the sense that I still am available to bless them. I'm still looking for ways to bless them. I have vision for my grandkids. See, what I carry in my heart, I'm going to do according to what I have in my heart. And if I have unbelief in my heart, if I have fear in my heart, if I have offendedness or bitterness in my heart, my actions are going to show what's in my heart. So we, we are all acting out our vision. Wow. Wow. We, we may not know it, we may not think about it that way, but we are acting out our vision. The way we talk to people, the way we act around people, that's the vision that we're carrying. Listen to this. You know what you have seen. Well, let me, let me back up. You know you have seen something when it stimulates you to worry or to praise. If what you're carrying in your heart, or let me put it this way, if you are worrying, that is a symptom of a vision. If you are praising, that is a symptom of a vision. A praiser has a vision of a promise fulfilled. A worrier has a vision of how could this thing be? Let me worry about this some more. See, our heart is being revealed by whether we're praising or we're worrying. How many of us are thankful? I'm not, don't raise your hands right now. Okay, thank you. I'm, there's two thankful people in here. <laughs> he can't see, but I thought I should let him know. So, when you get up in the morning... When you go to your place of employment or you go to school, what's going on inside of you? Is it praise? Is it thankfulness? Or is it worry? Or is it nothing? Is it just kind of robotic going through the motions? That too reveals what's going on in our hearts. And so we we need to be aware that Within our heart, we're carrying a vision, whether we've calculated this, evaluated this or not. There is a vision on the inside. You have a vision for your marriage and family, whether you've thought about it or not. How can I know what my vision is? Listen to yourself. Talk to them. See what you do to them. See if you're seeing how, how you have to budget your blessings or if you're wanting to be like the Father and do exceedingly abundantly. But I can't do that. If the windows of heaven were to open, then I can't. Aha, we found unbelief. See, we get back to unbelief. Is God that good? Is God that good? Fourth point. You will never go farther than what you see. You will never go farther than what you see. Somewhat redundant, but... What, what are you, it's not that I see my, how, how am I doing here? When we came from Texas to here, uh, back in 2007, all I had was a word from God. And my wife had a job interview possibility in, at the ministry. Uh, but a word from God is a pretty good deal for me, so I, I, walk, I walk on words from God. But I couldn't see what I'm doing now. But I could see that God wanted to bless me. Here's the point I want to make. You won't always see the specifics, but if you know the heart of the Father, the specifics will work themselves out. When Paul got the Macedonian vision and he saw a man from Macedonia come help us, there's no evidence he ever found that man. But he got to Macedonia, and other things took place there. See, I didn't know what was going to happen to my life up here when we came up here uh, 12 and a half years ago. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew it was going to be good. good. See, I might not have a 2020 on this thing, but I know the heart of the Father. I know the promise of God the exceedingly abundantly more than I can ask or think. See, I've entered into that dimension now to where that's my default expectation. 
more than I can ask or think, is now my default expectation in life. It was a journey to get there. I went through the performance base. I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. I've been through that. Now I am worthy. I hope you hear my heart on this. Because of him, he made me worthy to expect exceedingly abundantly more than I can ask or think. See, that's my default now. And so I expect my marriage to get better and better and better. I expect my kids to be more and more. My kids are so far ahead of where I was at, their, at that age. Light years. Light years. And I expect that. And I expect them to be more blessed. I expect them to be financially blessed, uh, blessed, blessed health-wise. I expect their kids to be blessed. I expect all that. That's my default now. It's a much better default. Than, than budgeting the blessings of God be, by performance. I'm not going to do that. It's not my vision anymore. God surprises me. We got surprised this week. We've gotten surprised several times in the past few months. Major surprises. Good ones. I got to go back. Uh, we started our missionary journey in, in Guadalajara in 1978. Uh, we lasted for four months. I learned a lot. Came back defeated. <laughs> I'll tell some of that in school, but a few weeks ago, it's been 41 years, I went back to Guadalajara and did a conference for 400 people and a, and a, a TV interview that's going all over Latin America. All Spanish-speaking countries are going to see this. And I did a couple of churches that I wasn't counting on, but... That was good too. But God surprised me by taking me back to where we began and where I felt like a failure. He opened the door and it had a major impact. It's probably going to continue. See, but this is now my default expectation. I'm expecting good things. I'm expecting to be surprised. I'm expecting for blessings to overtake me. Because that's the vision I now carry in my heart. What are you carrying in your heart? What are you carrying in your heart? Because you're, something's in there that's a vision that you may not have even realized. And you're acting it out, and you're talking it out, and you're budgeting it out. You will never go farther than you can see. Number five. Let's go to 1 John 3, 2 before I tell you what it is. 1 John 3, 2. It says, Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I, I get a lot out of that right there. You shall be like him because why? You shall see him. Now, let me, let me package that. You are like what you see. You are like what you see. You, your life is a mirror reflection, we could say, of what you're looking at with your heart. And when you see him, you'll be like him because you'll see him as he is. But what are you seeing now? Are you seeing him now? Are you seeing him wanting to bless you now? Are you seeing him wanting to lift you up now? Are you seeing him healing you now? What are you seeing now? Because you will be like what you see now. And if you're seeing budgeting, if you're seeing hard row to hoe, if you're seeing marriage on the rocks, if you're seeing health is getting worse, if you're seeing these things, you may not even think you're looking at that, but if that's how you're talking and that's how you're acting, that's what you're getting. That's what you're getting. I want to be like what I see, but, but I've got to go back and check what am I looking at because I may not want to be like what I see sometimes. But when I hear bad news, heard some bad news today, or what could be potentially bad news, but I have a default position. And I immediately responded to this person, no, this is going to be fine. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Some of you know, well, I promise I will stop. Some of you have heard me tell the story of, of my son who fell off the roof a couple, three years ago. I guess it'll be coming up on three years, I guess, or two years. In December, putting up Christmas lights on his father-in-law's roof. 
on a ladder on a roof. Uh, ladder twisted, off he went, hit his, landed on his head on the sidewalk. Oh okay. So, anyway, we get a phone call. And, of course, you have choices at that moment, what you're going to see. You're either going to see death, brain damage, paralysis, or you're going to see healing. I had to fight. For four hours, as, the, as he's taking an ambulance to the hospital, as all of this is going on, I'm praying like a father with tears in my eyes, and then I'm moving over into man of God with faith in my heart. And then I would go slip back into father with tears in my eyes, and I would fight my way back into man of God. And I had to choose what I was going to see. And I'm not taking credit for what happened. I'm just saying that was the battle I went through. There were other people praying, and there was you know, a lot going on. Four hours later, he walked out of the hospital without even a concussion. <laughs> See, this is, this is where I, I learned these things through going through these things. And I realized the power of vision. No, I am not going to see death, paralysis, and brain damage. I see David, and I'd start to drift. No, and that, that was a four-hour battle, but we won. Praise God. Because you're going to, receive, you're going to be like what you see, you're going to speak like what you see. You're going to do what you see. And you're going to receive what you see. You will, if you believe. If you believe. Amen. Did you get something from this? Yeah. You stand up. I want to pray with you. Because I believe God is wanting to crack open some hearts tonight and so a new vision on the inside a new default vision of more than you can ask or think it's going to impact your words it's going to impact your actions it's going to impact the way you look at life praise God let's pray hallelujah thank you father for your word We make a decision now, Father, in the name of Jesus to never doubt a promise of God. To never doubt a word from God. To never doubt something that looks too good for us because we know us. No, we're not going to live on that performance-based level. We're going to move into the dimension of your grace, of your abundance, of your love of your exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask or think. And every promise, Father, we're going to spend time in and, and meditate on it and in it until we see it. Until our default heart condition is changed to the goodness of God, to the blessing of God, to the promises of God. We're going to look at our marriages with new eyes and see a better future than we've ever thought possible and we're going to act that way and speak that way we're going to look at our children with new eyes we're going to see transformed hearts and lives we're going to act that way we're going to speak that way we're going to look at our place of ministry or employment with new eyes our hearts are going to to create or to receive the vision of god for where we are that we might be a blessing that we might see a blessing, that we might speak a blessing, that we might do a blessing in all of the circumstances that we're involved with. We're going to have a new default heart vision of the goodness of God in our lives, the blessings of God overtaking us. Hallelujah. And I pray for every family in this room, every family represented in this room. Father, I just pray that something would click, the light would come on, the switch would flip in every heart that I'm tired of living according to the budgeted vision. I'm ready to move into the grace vision of God, the blessed vision of God. Father, we thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. In the precious name of Jesus.
Amen and amen. Amen. So good. Thank you so much, Barry. Such a good word. So uh, I'm the guy. I like a budget, but I feel free of one now. So this is good. <laughs> but you know, by his stripes, you are healed. Above all, I wish that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask, think, or imagine. It doesn't matter where you've been up to this point. You can change that in your heart right now. What are you going to start believing? I got, I got to start believing. I got to start seeing things different. You know, I've, I've had a, a huge vision for this church since 2010, but I've got to I've got to have a vision for other things. So I got a lot to chew on, Barry. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, would our prayer team please come up? I I believe that some of you, your faith has been built, and you are at, you are expecting. And again, if you're not there, you you can change that now. You can be there. God will meet you right where you are at. He's a good father. I say it a lot. It's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance, right? He is so good. And if there's anybody in this place, if you're not born again, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please come up. But no matter what it is, it does not matter what it is, please come up and allow one of these awesome people to pray for you. Give Barry a hand one more time. Amen. And you guys are welcome to sing along with us as we're dismissed. We love you guys. Thank you so much again, Brother Barry. That was so powerful. Just so powerful. We're so blessed. Don't forget to get your list of ingredients for our Christmas outreach. God bless you guys. We'll see you back out next week.